So welcome and thanks to everyone for coming. I'm so happy to have this chance to finally have a launch event with Esther Cohen. Esther and I have known each other for, oh gosh, since I guess 2011, we met at the first Oroho um, uh, retreat at Ghost Ranch. And we've been friends for quite a while. And we keep thinking that one of these days we're gonna do a, be, have a chance to do a reading together, um, which I think would be really a lot of fun. Um, representing kind of two extremes, both physically <laughs> and... <laughs> Ruth and I are opposites. Ruth and I are opposites. We are and love each but, other for that. But, I do want to say that we're we're so excited to see so many of you all who we haven't seen in forever. Forever. <laughs> yeah, from Ghost Ranch. So many people from Ghost Ranch. And I, I also want to say that Ruth and I talked maybe five years ago about bringing us all back together again at Ghost Ranch. But yeah. James Shulman suggested today that we meet in, in Asheville. So maybe we'll all meet in Asheville. Maybe we should do that. Yeah. I gather that Ghost Ranch is a little easier now to uh, set up set up an event at. Um, so that's also a possibility. OK, so welcome. And I'm going to turn this over to Esther. And I'm only going to say a couple of, of sentences before Ruth talks. But the first one is how happy I am to see everybody here. And um, we're here to celebrate Ruth's new book called Quick Water Oracles. And if you haven't read it yet, you should. And Ruth's going to put information about where to order the book in the chat. But they've got it everywhere. It's published by Two Fine Crows Books, and it's a beautiful, unusual, joyful book about poems and channeling. And um, I want to repeat her title, Quick Water Oracles, because I want to tell you a story about my own uh, first book, my first novel, which was called No Charge for Looking. And, uh, <laughs> When I was uh, on my very first radio show, the radio host said, um, Esther Cohen is the author of a book called Charging for Looking. <laughs> I want us all to know that Ruth's book is called Quick Water Oracles. And um, she's going to read from us, read from the book today. And I'm going to ask her some questions. And in the end, we're all going to write a little bit. And those people who want to read will maybe be able to. And um, I hope the next time we see you guys, it's going to be somewhere permanent and physical. And mm. we're all writing a beautiful space. Ghost Ranch. Ghost Ranch. I hope we're all writing again in Ghost Ranch. <laughs> so yeah. the first question is to Ruth, you know, channeling is a, a mysterious complicated thing that doesn't only mean turn on the TV. And uh, Ruth's gonna tell us what it means, how it started and how she began. Okay. So, <laughs> and then she's gonna read some poems. I'm gonna hold this up first so that everyone can see it and you can get it anywhere online or in the, just go, go into your local bookstore. Um, how did I get started? Well, um, um, yeah, I, um, from the time I was a child, I had experiences of merging with the natural world, but I didn't know what that was. And I learned very early that whatever it was, it wasn't normal and <laughs> I, I buried it. Um, so it wasn't until later in life as a poet that I came to realize that um, what I felt was my most authentic work, the, the things that seemed to me that were coming from a place um, that was true, um, were 
coming from a kind of intuitive connection with the natural world uh, and the body um, and the earth. And by then I was a little bit more open to a more expansive idea of what is real. Um, so I, I took a class in conscious channeling and really what I wanted, initially all I wanted was to deepen this intuitive connection with nature. Um, I come from um, a, um, a skeptical, scientific, non-religious um, environment. And um, I totally did not expect to encounter, to have the literally the doors fly open, which is the phrase I actually used in that, in, um, naming this, this section of the book, the first section of the book, the doors fly open. Um, not an encounter, not just, you know, trees and animals and birds and what I expected, but fairies, dragons, angels, beings from other galaxies, um, a host of other non-physical fields and fields I didn't even believe in. So it was um, very weird, um, but really, <laughs> but that's what happened. And that's what I was experiencing. And it was also very um, loving and very uh, fun and delightful. And um, so I just went with it. And um, so I wanted to read actually, first of all, what I mean by, uh, something that was completely, completely off the wall for me. And this is, this is one of the earlier uh, channels. And these are the great dragons. And I, as I say, I was not expecting this. Yes, we are. We are great energy, dynamic, strong. You imagine us in dragon shape, and that's a good shape. Or fire. We are light, we are light, we are power, power, and that you express as fire. Ours is not the red fire of volcanoes, but golden, a crack and bright gold light. Or wings, wings taking all the sky, all the sky, all the sky that you can see is one dragon. We are fields of light, power, movement, crack, light and the delight in it. That's the part that human beings miss. The delight, delight in the vast formations within our fields, networks of light, many stars within. We enjoy earth very much. We enjoy participating and you, you feel a kinship and that is a true kinship. We power you like a flow of bright joy. And we enjoy connection even with the small. Your embodied self is small, but vastness is vastness is vastness. It is joyful to think and enjoy smallness as in your own body and to love that and bees and flowers, these small perfect things. But know that vastness is vastness is vastness. We are not bigger than you. That's something to think about. We are not bigger than you. We are light, power, joy, crack, brightness, delight. You feel power in your sun, even your small sun. And this is good. Embrace your power, embrace your power, embrace your power. That is how you will do what you wish to do now. Flow without inhibition. We are not inhibited. We are bright. And you, you be bright. You be bright. You be bright. So, so that was the dragon. Can I ask you, that was so beautiful. Can I ask you if you could make me a co-host because there are people in the waiting room? Oh, sure. Well, let's see if I, if I can. Um, here, let me let the people in. 
Okay, I wish we had practiced making you a co-host and I'll just try to be mindful of it or just remind me and I'll do it because I'm not sure how to do this, how to do that. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Good. Um, so, you know, you you talk about how we all have to connect with our deep uh, intuition and um, that's hard for most of us. We don't we don't know how to open ourselves up to saying what it is we really want to say. How do we do that? How do you suggest we do that? Yeah, I think that's really true. Um, for me, I really believe in meditation practices. Um, there are three kinds of meditation that work for me. One is um, one is a breath practice practice, a breath meditation practice that brings me back to the body and to, because the body is always in the present moment. So it's bringing back to now, now, now. Um, the other, the second one is um, practice of interrogating what I am feeling and thinking. Um, and the third is a practice of, of loving kindness um, or um, kind of a universal benevolence of um, wishing well um, and to myself <laughs> as well as to others. Um, so those are the three meditation practices that I find are really helpful and um, that make it maybe easier to know what it is you want to say. Um, also, I practice free writing. I journal um, and I like using a pen and paper if, if unless somebody's absolutely committed to the, the computer. But um, there's a brain hand connection that I think exists um, for writing with a pen. And um, I and, I, and the practice is, you know, just free writing, writing as fast, I write as fast as I can without thinking. Um, I'm really trying to outwrite the editor. I'm trying to get so fast that the editor can't catch up with me um, for about 20 minutes every day. And usually I don't look at it again for a couple of weeks and then I'll go back and um, there will be seeds of something that I could pick out and then begin with those. Can, this, can uh, you read us your how to channel poem? Um, yeah, sure. Or why or don't what I, you like? Let me read about, actually, I think there's a couple of things that would be useful. Um, let me read this, which is about uh, being a poet. This is one of the things they said to me. You merge with and channel the earth around you. This is your particular domain as a poet. It is who you are. It is what is unique about this, your chosen work. And this is enough to be giving the world. To speak poetry from this merged, expanded condition is rare. Do not be distracted. Be as pure and simple and focused and intense as you can be. You just be the poet. To be a child and poet is enough. But I also, I wanted to read, um, it's actually a later channel, but it was so, it's so helpful kind of in this regard of how to get in touch. Um, this was when I was doing a, a residency in Tennessee and um, it was the pine trees um, that were speaking. Slow down now. Slow down and sit and breathe. Open your eyes to what is around you. Be in love. Be here. We are a grove. This is a word that we like. Grove, grove, grove. It's a slower word. And this slow respiration groves us and you with us. And in the background, the showing off happy song mockingbird, not showing off as the phrase means, but 
throwing the gold of song into the air for all to enjoy. This is what he does for no reason but to have fun. Here uh, again, uh, what we are saying over and over, all is for no reason. It is for pleasure. It is for itself knowing itself. Just throw the gold, just sing for pleasure or pure joy. Beautiful. Um, how did channeling change the poems that you write and uh, what you write about? Oh gosh, um, yeah, it, um, it changed everything. I guess to, first of all, just to know that, um, everything is conscious, everything is conscious was a revelation. I mean, even rocks, places, uh, landscapes. Um, that's just kind of amazing um, for me. And um, I think that specifically what the channels have encouraged in me is um, being authentic, um, you know, I think all, all of us who are writers always have this kind of um, inner um, com conflict. It's not really conflict, but, you know, over and over we have to choose what is true to us in our deepest selves versus what might um, please the marketplace. And um, that was really, was really reinforcing. There were, there were several um, over and over, in fact, channels saying, you know, you have to be who you are. You just have to be who you are. Um, for me, that, uh, that includes the fact that I am not, I'm, uh, most authentically, a poet of um, the non-human rather than the human, and um, there are there are consequences to that, mm -hmm. and accepting that um, is has been really important for me, and uh, and understanding that my work is creating from love. Um, their phrase is the singing, the seeing and singing of love. Um, that it is a joy to be seen. Um, we know this, um, we all know this for ourselves, but that is our work also to see. And it, it gives joy, everything delights in being apprehended truly. Um, and that too is very um, reassuring. So um, I wanted to actually, um, there are a couple of, there are uh, these, there's a field that is called, that um, I call the singers. And they actually sing they create form by singing in the largest sense. And they channel with me uh, occasionally. Um, and here in this one, they said, well, you are also a singer in your way, in a small way. Weave into your song, the songs of flowing water, of birds, of trees suing in the wind, of the wind moving, of grasses <laughs> bending down, and the slow sound of water through the feet of trees. This is your realm. Your love is most pure and uninhibited where there is the clarity and integrity and truth to self of all these beings in nature. I'm sorry, what? You are not a singer of the realm of realms of humankind. This you must understand. You are a singer of other realms 
which you bring into sensory realization in the human realm, and that is your work. You are a translator from other realms. It is possible to open some connections and close others. Remove yourself from the contemporary world more and more. So that was kind of like a heads up, I guess one would say. And Ruth, do you mean by that, that we shouldn't keep writing about all the horrible things that are happening in the universe? Is that your, one of the things that you're saying? That I shouldn't, the... that I should oh, you... yeah. Um, I mean, I think that they're, um, they're, this was talking to me. Mm -hmm. If you ask what I think, I think, Lo loving human beings and writing about human beings, which you do, Esther, is beautiful. It, they're all they're doing is saying to me that that's not my, that's not my realm. So that's not what I do, but that's what you do. But it is also true that over and over, I did hear, and not just for me, but for, you know, kind of wisdom in general that um, to, there's a difference between saying, no, not that. That's not in my, I'm not, that is not going to be in the realm of what I accept. Mm -hmm. and, and coming from hatred and rage, which is what I've come from, for, I was, had been coming from for a really long time about the loss of species and the situated condition of the earth. And so there's a difference between um, that. And that I think is coming from a failure to acknowledge, what is it that we see the, um, we see the evil, but we don't see um, what is, shared within ourselves and um it's it's too easy i think and is harmful in the long run to be in they talk a lot about the fact that righteousness and good and evil and justice and injustice and all of these things are really human categories and that none of them exist in the larger actuality. There's just each end of each being is unique. And um, that doesn't mean that I have to accept um, what is harmful to me or to someone else. But it does mean that I uh, that not hating is a really useful path for me. Um, um, what would you say are the main things you learned from channeling? And uh, are there things that you think about differently because of, because of channeling? I mean, in some way you answered that question a little bit now. Yeah, I think of, oh, a lot of things changed for me because of this. I actually had this wonderful thing that Melanie Lindauer, who is here, I think, um, sent me, which were kind of the... Um, what she saw as a whole, as, as a list of um, uh, themes or ideas that sort of are repeated through, through the book. Um, and I thought I would read just a few of them because they were, it, 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 uh, I hadn't really kept that kind of uh, awareness. It's so familiar to me now. And so seeing this like, oh yeah, that's true. That everything is conscious. Um, that there is not this sorrow, this grief over death. You know, we come to play and then we go out and we come to play and then we go out. Um, that measurement of ourselves and of others, judgment through these categories, good, bad, you know, right, wrong hierarchies too. All of this is just human stuff we made up. That life is for joy. Um, the whole idea that there is a field of motherness, which there is, um, 
you can call it by a million different names, but there's like this kind of essence or energy of motherness. And it can sometimes be um, turned back on itself. And there, there were a number of channels about that. That we are meant to be who we are as fully and intensely as possible. That kind of idea of authenticity. Um, that space and stars are within us as well as outside that everyone can channel, um, that truth is what gets us through, um, even if it's hard. Um, and the thing I read about throw, just throwing the gold, that just um, all is for no reason. It's for the pleasure of knowing itself, of itself knowing itself. Um, so those, were, those are things, all of those were kind of revelatory to me. Um, I want to read actually one of the channels, in fact, two of them, I think. Um, this was the, the dolphins, which are kind of a field of, I guess one would say the collective consciousness of dolphins. <laughs> um, I, um, this is about the issue of grieving. What is um, leaving? What is the species that are going out? and which is a very, has been a very important issue to me and which I was still grieving throughout. Um, all that is beloved to you, that you have been grieving, it is you who grieve, you who long to preserve those that are leaving. Those that are leaving do not feel sorrow to leave. We are the dolphins. Let us speak to this, for we are fullness of joy in this life and this being here, we love it. We love it. We love ocean and light and dark. We love dancing with the world. We love eating, but we do not conceptualize in the way that you conceptualize this. We are in, we are in, and we do not look around and think how many are in and how many are gone. We do not think then there were and there will be and all this kind of thinking. We come to play and then we go out and we come to play and then we go out. And we can be in any realm, any time space we choose to come in. So there is no end for us. And so it is true for all. The singing that you are doing of our beauty and power and joy and light, the feel of being dolphin, the joy of being dolphin, all this is a beautiful thing to enter into and sing. And that knowing, that merging, it exists. It exists. That song exists in the realm that you create in the moment of singing. That exists and you have created it. It is not an ark that you are saving from destruction. It is a joy making of being together and singing with us, of us, as us, merged with us, this song. So that's the dolphins talking about um, species going out. And then there was this, which was uh, a, a canyon in Sierra Madre, California. We are a beautiful place to understand heat and light desiccation and odor, the scent of black sage, and there are bears and bobcats, and we are full of birds, for it was raining just a little bit yesterday, and there is a swimming pool down below, and this is good. Life is very precious here because it is very fragile. So we say, isn't it beautiful? Precious life in body, green life, red life, gold life, black bear life, bobcat life, snake life, dog and cat life, and all the little animals and all the plants, everything singing, joy, 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 joy to be in body. This is so delicious. You, you sing this too. We say, change your spectacles to joy to joy, not rose-colored glasses, earth-colored glasses, 
life colored glasses. See how delicious and enjoy. I wish we could. I think we will. I think today is a good example of all of us enjoy, which is a great, great thing. Ruth, can you tell us what's next for you? Yes. Um, I, I'm actually pretty soon going to be starting um, making audio recordings of Quick Water and my other books because I love to read and I think that that will be joyful. Um, so I'm doing that. I'm writing new poems, which I'm really happy about. It's become very clear to me that this is the last, the last part of my life as a poet. I'm approaching 80. Um, I'm very aware that this phase is the ending time. Um, so I think these poems are singing the ending, which I don't think that we do enough. Um, singing the ending and singing love for what is, as the dolphins say, for what is as it is. So that's that's what I'm working on. Um, is the title of your new book singing the ending? I think it is. We'll see, but I think it's I think it is. Okay. I wanted to read one last channel. Um, the our our beloved cat Ohia was kind of one of the um, guiding spirits of the whole time of channeling. And um, uh, she, was, she was killed um, here um, about a year ago. And um, it was very hard. Um, I was able to connect with her um, as she was dying. And um, then a, a few weeks later, I was able to channel with her. Um, so this channel is, oh, he is talking, and then she's followed by the field of motherness talking. So oh, he has said, we have been together many times, and we will be together many times, and you will come and join us all in not too many years. So you can look forward to that. And enjoy the world while you were there, as I did. Such delight and interest and fun and merging with dapple light in the end. I love you, whether in body or not in body. We are friends. We are companions. Now return to your path and enjoy your flowing of all that you are before you pass through. So I was crying. And the field that I call the mother said, it is all right to grieve. The love you feel is for child, mother, sister, all these things, even closer than that. For this is the true affinity for you, that with the animal. We remind you, five or six years, Ruth, and you may after that not be able to do the poeting. The channeling, yes but perhaps not the writing. So take into your heart what Ohia experienced dying, the dissolution, the merging, merging into the light on bark, merging. For merging, you can experience every day. This is dying. This is a very wise thing to experience. We say, you may have some time before you leave, of dissolution and vagueness in the world. And that is all right. That is all right. That is all right. Do not fear that. Do not follow a human model. Go your own way. And your dying will be so delicious as Ohia's was, like light on bark, dissolving into all that is. First, all that is around you in the physical world and then greater and greater expansion, becoming lighter and more expanded and more oneness, dissolution, becoming light. 
Now it matters only to express, to experience, to speak, to sing, to be happy, to be happy. Well, Bruce, you're really the perfect person to read at the beginning of the new year for all of us. <laughs> you're absolutely perfect. So Ruth has offered to lead us through a meditation and writing exercise um, so that we can begin the year writing something too. Yes. So will you tell us how that's going to work? Yeah. Um, first of all, make sure you've got your pen and paper or... I mean, if you if you work on a computer, that's fine. Okay. Okay, everybody ready? Um, so I'm just going to uh, take you on a little walk, and then I'm going to let you say what happens next. Okay. So close your eyes. Take a deep breath. And exhale. You're walking on a path through the woods. It's, it's midwinter. Most of the trees are bare, except for an occasional evergreen or holly. There's been a thaw. There's snow under the trees, but it has melted from the path. It smells like earth and wet leaves and ice. You can hear a creek somewhere nearby, snow melt rushing over stones. And you can hear small birds talking to one another in the underbrush, chickadees and juncos. The path is winding deeper and deeper into the woods. It's mostly oak trees now, gnarled and bare. Through the branches, you can see the clear blue winter sky. And the deeper you go into the forest, the deeper the path is worn in the earth, a trail made by many animals, deer and bear and foxes and rabbits over many, many years. You can see their tracks ahead of you and sometimes glimpse a white tail or a red brush. The ground is rising now into the heart of the forest huge old oaks arching into a vault over the trail as it climbs. And among the trees, there is movement, birds flying and squirrels leaping from branch to branch. And you catch a glimpse of small bright eyes in the underbrush and deer are moving silently through the shadows. And everyone is passing in the same direction you are. The sound of the creek is farther away now. All around the trail are dead thickets of hawthorn and holly bushes, bright with berries, weaving together so that now you are walking in a kind of alley. And now the trail has come to the top of the hill. Ahead of you, the alley has flattened into an impenetrable hedge of hawthorn and holly bushes blocking your way. As you watch, Three deer trot from among the trees and leap over the hedge. A rabbit vanishes into the thicket and a flock of small birds sails over it into the world beyond. What is beyond? And suddenly you realize that the path dives down to an opening in the hedge, a hole. And the hole is big enough that if you wanted to, you could crawl through. So you crawl through the whole, what happens next? I'm gonna suggest we stop here so that we get to hear a couple of people. Okay. Here. Sounds great. So I know this is a room full of writers. So <laughs> there are some people here who would like to read what you wrote. So can you let us know? Can you raise your hand or do something? Jillian, is that a hand raise? No? <laughs> uh, Keith, Keith, would you like to read? 
well, just have to turn the light on so I can see what I wrote. <laughs> Take a look. Good. Uh, okay. Without opening my eyes, my face is touched by a warmth that is not the warmth of the sun or the heat of fire, but the soft warmth that wells up inside with a soft touch on your hand or your face, a familiar warmth that has been dwelling in the very heart of me for longer than memory. Ooh. That holds me up in the dark hour that welcomes me home with gladness and an overflowing of what cannot be seen. Oh, that's beautiful, beautiful. Keith. Absolutely that's beautiful. Really nice. Yeah. Thank you, Keith. Thank you. Lisa, did you raise your hand or you're just clapping? Uh, no, I did. I did. Oh, good. Okay. Okay. What happens next? Through the space, light, sweet light. Colors touch pink to golden, an open landscape. Looking down, I see in a distance water, horizon, purpled in patches. Solid under my footfalls. I could run headlong down this gentle hill surrounded by the arms of mountains, breathing in other seasons, all happening at once. The Japanese garden, the Brooklyn Botanical Gardens, my childhood, a warmer time. Oh, that's beautiful. beautiful. Thank you. <laughs> I, I wanna say that there are three Lisas here. So if any of the other two Lisas- <laughs> <laughs> I will take my hand down so we don't get confused. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Marsha, did you have, raise your hand? Mm -hmm. I we did. Have two Marshas here too, spelled oh. differently, but oh, we're right. There are two <laughs> Marsha. Mar I met Marsha Pincus. Okay. Okay. Um, there is a world in the hole in the thicket, and that world is this one, but paler, sepia toned, pastel, vintage, faded photograph. It's not what I expected, which for the world, which was for the world to be brighter and more vivid. So I'm surprised. I reach into my pocket for glasses and I don't have any with me, though I doubt if they would have made a difference anyway. Why is everything faded, pale here? I need to know, but I am struggling. Not everything can be seen, Marcia. <laughs> I think I hear a voice that sounds a bit like my own. And as I stand there, as I stand there uh, struggling, straining to see, everything grows paler and the edges of things grow fuzzier and color is drained. And I am standing in a field of gray fog. Wow, lovely work. Kind of, that was like a painting. Yeah. You know, like a painting. And a very interesting question. It was like, it was becoming not as you expected it to become like, we're not in Kansas anymore, but now we're not in Kansas anymore, the other direction. <laughs> yeah, that surprised me. So thank you for the opportunity to, to do that. <laughs> Who else? Who else would like to read? I, I'm sure that every single person here wrote something interesting. I mean, given who you are. I'm happy to, to read mine. Yes. Gillian, can, I, okay. can I ask you, Gillian? Are Gillian, you, yep. Gillian, Gillian, I always mispronounce your name. It's all right. Are, are you in Australia? Yes. So, yes, I am. Um, <laughs> It's I'm not here. Somebody on a Zoom from Australia. <laughs> okay. So I am not here, there. I try to be, but I'm not. I'm not. It is very hot and it is early morning. I climb through the lunky, a hole in bushes that fits sheep, not cattle. I must be a sheep or a wombat, a rabbit. No, a wombat. Mm -hmm. On the other side, it is dry and flat without water. 
small tracks of birds and lizards abound, thumps of kangaroos. I hear the earth singing to me, the background hum with the chorus of other animals when they have something to say. As a wombat, I busy myself making sure I have everything in order for the night. I can't find anything here and I'm not sure what exactly I'm looking for. Companionship, not noisy, silent. The silent busying of us all, open, clear, focused on self, not others. Mm. That's wonderful. Thank you very much. Mm. Thank you. Lynn. I just love the wombat, I just have to say. <laughs> wombats are not in my experience, so I just love that. <laughs> Maybe our next retreat should be in Australia. Yes. <laughs> and it's warm, Jillian. I remember spending a wonderful, warm, warm January, February, March in um, Australia. So <laughs> about the warmth. Yes, it's very hot, which is why I'm sort of in here, out of the sun. Yeah. <laughs> there were there were great Australian images, like the kang <laughs> kangaroos. We don't have kangaroos. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so I'll give this a shot. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. <clears throat> okay. Um, I descend. So what happens next? I descend deep into the earth. There is a long, dark cave, large enough for me to walk upright, but not much bigger. And there is a torch of fire on the wall. I take it to light the way, or I could go up, up to the light. I'm not sure if I want to be here in the earth realm. I'm in the in-between. It's not easy here in the body right now. So I walk through. Um, I walk through the cave with the torch in the unknown. I don't know where it's going or leading me, but I'm curious. Oh, that's lovely. That's like a, a solstice cave. I always go into the cave over the solstice. So that's yes. <laughs> Yeah, it's a good time of year for that. It's so great how different all of these are. Yes, isn't it? Yeah, wonderful. I think we have time for one more. We have time for one more. Marcia. Uh, I was going to ask if you wrote two, Esther. I'd love to hear yours. Well, let's hear Marcia first. And if there's a little time, I'm going to read. Yes, I'd love that. I'd love that. So I wrote, I look up and there's a vastness of light and color. Red, green, ochre, yellow, burnt orange, bay, all the color of nature. Mountain bluebird reach you as you emerge into an open meadow. And there is a figure there, androgynous and strikingly beautiful. They take your hand and motion for you to join them as they walk into the meadow. There you are greeted by a mighty elk with a diamond-studded leather saddlebag marked with carvings. Symbols of prosperity, love, compassion, trust, honesty, wealth, and abundance. The elk kneels down and you climb aboard with the figure whom you realize is a guide for you to the next phase. Phase that you will into your own and realize your purpose. That's, that's wonderful, Marcia. It reminds me of the, um, the Wildwood Tarot that I use a lot when we do tarot together. Yeah, <laughs> that's beautiful. It's also so nice that people are optimistic. Mm. It's a very good thing. Yes, don't you think? Yeah. Okay, um, yes, yes, you should. We've got enough time. Okay, I'm going to read mine. Light and light and light, and the day is still young enough, and you yourself are still young enough to be able to smile and then... At long last, after so many years of not being able, you finally sing your song. <laughs> okay, I think that's the that's for all of us today. <laughs> that's wonderful. <laughs> yeah. Um. So I I I just want to say how lucky we all are to hear Ruth today. 
-hmm. and and to be able to hear one another. Mm -hmm. And um, I want to remind you to get the book if you don't have it already. And if you have it already, get one for somebody else. It's a really beautiful, unusual, joyful, um, and unpredictable book. I think it's entirely unpredictable. And I can't um, say how happy I am. I can't emphasize enough how happy I am to spend the very beginning of New Year with everybody here and have the chance to hear everybody's words, yes. some people's words. And next time it would be great to hear everybody else's words. Yes, it would be. It's just so great to see your faces. So happy new year, everyone. Thank you so much for coming. It's just happy new year. Everybody. Happy new year. <laughs>